have a guest today who uh, can talk about those things. She has a wonderful ministry to women, and her name is Kim Bolton. She's a recording artist. She's a speaker. She plays the piano. She plays the saxophone. Uh, she has this ministry to women, and they take cruises and have meetings and just get together for that good girl talk, and then you bring what the Word of God says about what women should be, and there's a really good outcome. And Kim is a friend for many, many years, and it's so good to see her again. She used to appear with some regularity uh, when the good life was on daily, and a wonderful singer, a wonderful mother, and a wife, and I'm anxious for you to meet my friend Kim. You know, the, the, the longer you walk with the Lord, I can tell you what you really appreciate. And that would be friends you've had a long time and, and your path crosses and you find out they're just as steadfast and going on with the Lord. It just warms my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I feel about you, Kim. It's Thank been a while. You. Thank you. Yes, it has. You know what I remember, though? The Good Life was a daily show and yeah. you sang on it whenever you were down here. But every time you had just had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> You just had a baby last year, Kim. <laughs> it seemed like that, but they're grown now, uh -huh. and we're we're finished. Yeah, thirty-five years of marriage, four kids, but there's a big span. Our girls are thirty-four and twenty-nine, and our boys are nineteen and twenty. So you separated them a little right. bit, a lot, a lot. But when you have girls when you're old, I mean boys when you're old, uh -huh. you're glad you have girls to help you raise them. And you that's know, what I happened. never thought of that. And my girls are good mamas. My daughter just had two boys, and they were teenagers, and her best friend had a daughter, and she was visiting from out of town. So the friend is on the phone with her teenage daughter in South Carolina and going back and forth and back and forth and this and that. And, that. and my daughter walked over to her son and said, kissed him and said, thank you for being a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much estrogen there. You that's have to right, do it, that's so. right. Well, welcome back. Uh, Kim, as I mentioned, is a speaker singer, pianist, never heard you play the saxophone. That's all right. I, I don't want to seem ostentatious. Uh -huh. I used to play a lot. Uh -huh. Now I don't drag it around with me anymore. Now you really have a ministry to women. Let's go through, uh, these are all CDs, right? Mm -hmm. They're all CDs. They're kicking and grooving a couple of them. Uh, the latest one is worship, just tender, piano and vocal. Mm -hmm. And I like is that uh, in his pre in your presence? No, it's the one with the beachfront. Um, this one, it's uh, what you want to. Uh, what I want to do is sing to the Lord, not just about Him. Mm -hmm. And our heart cry is uh, is what the Lord longs to hear, mm -hmm. and He longs to fill that need. So uh, Psalm forty two six says, "When I'm down in the dumps, I'll rehearse everything I know about you." Uh huh. And so I just sing my heart out to the Lord. Okay, before we go on, I want, we're going to talk about one reason for this pillowcase, but I need one. Okay. Um, kids afraid at night uh -huh. so much, and you have designed, it's upside down, mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> <laughs> it has all these scriptures yeah. that I won't be afraid. This came from um, a situation where you had a child who was afraid, yes. right? Uh, I was beginning to fly more and more every week. And uh, he was seven. Tony was keeping him and Marshall at seven and nine. And uh, one early morning, on a Friday morning, I headed to the airport and uh, Reese breached security. He ran through the security bars. They shut the first half of the airport down. When they finally let Tony get him through security and drag him out, he's hanging from the back of his arms screaming, don't go, don't go. This was oh 2002, uh -huh. and I wasn't afraid, but he was afraid for me. He didn't want me to get on another plane and see it go down on the news. And honest to goodness, it was dark 30 in the morning, and I'm not a crier, I'm not emotional, but I got on that plane teary-eyed, and I had three seats to myself, and I was just miserable, sad, and uh, the flight attendant said, you okay? And I said, no, I'm not. She said, would you like a drink? I said, no, <laughs> it's 5.30 in the morning. But I know better. I know when I'm uh, seriously attacked in my mind or my heart or even my body, I know what to do. When I'm down in the dumps, I'll rehearse everything I know about you. 
-hmm. I need my soul to revive. I need the word to revive my soul. So I just got out my journal and I said, Lord, I don't care about those women in Oklahoma. Honest to goodness, let them go. <laughs> my boy needs me. And I, in retrospect, I can see where the enemy tries to thwart any effort to win souls to tell about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So as I began to write my heart, I remembered those scriptures. Mm -hmm. And it was the same scriptures that healed me when a man broke into my house in the yes. middle of the night. Yes. And the Lord just, once again, everything I remembered then, I was remembering now. When I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I will lie down and sleep in peace. Mm -hmm. So I went home and wrote those scriptures down and I, I will fear at, no evil. I will fear no evil. He will give his angels charge yeah. over me. So I said to Reese, I said, you listen to me, boy. This is the word of God. <laughs> and I don't think my plane's going down, but if it goes down, you listen to me. God's word is still true. Yep. I'll never feel what hit me and he'll take me to heaven all the way and he'll carry you the rest of the way. You hear me? <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> that is exactly what we need to instill into the children. But it became life to him. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a month. And I said, Reese, what do you do when you're afraid? Seven years old. He said, Psalm 9111, I tell the <laughs> angels, get on the job. <laughs> that boy's not afraid yeah. today. Don't we just, if there's such a term as underuse the word of God right. in all those types of situations. Uh, the older I get, the better I'm getting at it, but yeah. I think, whew, I've sure missed out a lot through my life with right. being anxious. Sure. When he said be anxious for nothing. For nothing. That's tough. You got a book here, Conversations at the Girlville Diner. Yeah. Um, what is this compiled of? I've gone through it and the, the whole idea of the diner is uh, just metaphorically, it yeah. just speaks to you. Well, it's me and you sitting right here, mm -hmm. and it's just our stories, 40 stories of frenzy and faith, and they generally run on parallel tracks and usually arrive at the same time. But which one's going to win? The one you feed the most, mm -hmm. and I'm going to feed my soul with the faith in the Word. Psalm 119.50 says, This is my comfort and my consolation, that in my affliction, the Word revives me and gives me life. Amen. It's not my man and it's not my mama. It's the Word. And I'm going to say it until my soul believes it and my heart and my emotions. And then I'm just going to beat the enemy down with it. Keep going, yes. Um, how long have you and Tony been married? 35 years. All my life. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> She's telling the truth. Um, can you give us your secret for a perfect marriage for 35 years? I'll give it to you in one line. <laughs> Do it by faith and the feeling will come. And that'll preach hey, till Jesus Hey, just repeat comes. that. You do it by faith and the feeling will come. And uh, I remember very vividly, 1 Peter 3, see that she, she, that's you and me. And in the Amplified, it'll make you gag. It says, <laughs> see that she, love, adore, revere, prize, honor, esteem, defer to. <laughs> Her husband. But you know what? It's what? kind of counterculture today, oh, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it is. But when you finally, you do it by faith. Get it, yeah. You don't do it because you feel it. Mm -hmm. But then I would say something like, that's a nice tie. Well, Tony didn't hear me say nice tie. What he heard was, I look good today. Oh. She thinks I look good. And I saw the Lord. That was his Lord, interpretation. Exactly. The Lord took my words, blessed them with his anointing, and made that man hear what he needed to hear. I was just the donkey that was saying the right thing. You are speaking such truth. I've had a pastor on here. It's a huge church, maybe, maybe the biggest in the county. And his marriage was a disaster in the beginning. And uh, it's quite a story about how they came out of it and uh, they're fine and they live according to biblical truth. But uh, they wrote a little book called Learning to Love by Faith. Ah. And it is, it is so powerful. If people could ever get that idea 
because everything in our culture is feelings. How do you feel? Right. And oh, for heaven's sakes, don't ever offend anybody, you know, right. and, and you don't choose sides anymore, mm -hmm. you know, when the kids are playing ball. They chose sides when I was growing up. Sure. I was always the last one chosen. Sure. <laughs> I haven't had therapy. Um, but all those things have come into the church uh -huh. from culture. Yeah. And it's not supposed to work that way. So start being nice to your mate by faith. By faith, mm -hmm. that's right. And God honors every bit of our effort towards obedience. He mm -hmm. will. Yes, he, he does. Will he will make it what it needs to be. We have to begin to step out. I'll never forget it all. Indiana Jones, when he had to do it by faith, he had to step out and then the rope showed up mm -hmm. and he was able to cross mm -hmm. over. And it's the same way in mm -hmm. the natural mm -hmm. of our lives. What about these cruises? What do you do on them? You said you just come back from 75 women on a cruise. I said, that must be like herding cats. Ah, this was wonderful. We meet every morning, meet every evening. They give us a lounge. We turn it into a sanctuary mm -hmm. and uh, we laugh and sing. We had six speakers and singers. We just worship. Uh, if Once you've been on a cruise, mm -hmm. really you have no interest on what's what the ship has to offer as a believer. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you've gone to see a few things, you're, you're over it. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the end of the week, we have a lot of people that are stragglers. They just showed up at our event because they were bored on the ship. Mm -hmm. So we have great worship, great teaching. We laugh like crazy. It's good. Yes, and everybody, women, you, you need to get away once in a while yeah. and and disconnect. I'm such a believer in retreats and youth camps. Yes. I mean, how many young people were called into the ministry at youth camp? Right. Come on. It's when you separate yourself. Jesus was always coming apart. Right. I've heard it said, if you don't come apart, you will come apart. So That's the truth. We've got just a, a two or three minutes left. But I want you to tell us about one of the most horrifying situations a woman could ever experience. Mm -hmm. And that's when someone broke into your house. Yes, he came in in the middle of the night. I thought it was one of my children. And so fact, you heard a little noise. I heard a little noise, but I was so tired I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I just laid back down. And when I realized it was a man, of course, I freaked out. and. I asked, Did he come into your bedroom? Came into my room, crawled on my on his hands and knees to my side of the bed, and he didn't have any clothes on. He was naked. It was nothing but his Girl, white. I am just getting <laughs> creeped out. <laughs> yeah, creeped Hearing out. About it. Yeah, yeah, creeped out. And by the time he ran out, and we checked under beds and in closets, he was gone. And uh, did we, they catch him? No. <gasps> and CSI came to my house. And by the time CSI was finished, we hired someone to clean up the house. And we got back home that night and just like a man, uh, we put our kids to bed and Tony laid down in that bed and went to sleep. And <laughs> I laid down in that bed. And, How could he? Oh, well, because he's a man. <laughs> it, and uh, as a woman, I laid there and stood guard. Every noise was a naked man. And uh, I woke up Tony about a hundred times the first week just every noise, it could mm -hmm. be him, it could be him. Mm -hmm. And so I began to uh, stay up at night and stand guard. And you know, the enemy doesn't just make you afraid, mm -hmm. doesn't send a person into your house, then it's compounded. Now I'm hacked off at Tony because he didn't wake up and I'm mad at him because he could sleep and I can't. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm anguished and I'm fearful and I'm, I'm, I'm getting well, whacked. That's traumatic, my word. But I, two weeks later, I was doing laundry in the middle of the night, 2 a.m and I shook the sheet, and I could still hear the crack of the sheet, and I saw the front door handles turn. I screamed, Tony came running, and uh, once again, he wasn't there, but the locks on my front door were chiseled off with a screwdriver, and somebody was coming in, and what was he gonna do with it if he got me in? My, I'm just freak out. And uh, the long and the short of it is, it was, it was dog eat dog, pickaxe faith. I am going to pickaxe at the Word of God until I find something that can help me. Mm -hmm. And it was those scriptures. Mm -hmm. And I, today is a product of me having been through that experience and come out of it. Yeah. And yay God. I wonder if our um, audience would like to meet the man who could go to sleep. Yeah. He's come meet here. that man. Hey Tony, <laughs> come on. We just got a couple minutes, but I 
I want hey, my audience like, to see somebody who's been married 35 years. Yes. <laughs> to the most beautiful woman. He smiles in his sleep. That's what I've read. <laughs> well, these are. this is a dynamic duo and uh, great singers together and all. Well, thank you. And I want to have you on a future show, but you've got a ministry to men and so forth. But um, really, how would you bring her out of that? As a, as a woman, I... I might be in a padded cell right now. I don't know if that Well, I would have been. Uh -huh. Well, she's uh, tenacious in her faith and in quoting the Word of God. We, we always started uh, long ago. It's not enough just to, uh, to know it's in the Bible. You have to know that verse for yourself and become yours. When it becomes yours, mm -hmm. then you can have the power and the promise that comes with it. So, you know, as soon as she got a hold of the Word of God, then it was like another another person came back to life you know it was the holy spirit just brought her confidence and, and she, the fear left and as soon as the fear left well then yay god it was on to you know, to sharing what god had done instead of what he could do yes i i think we are so woefully ignorant in the church of the power of the word exactly that it well, just needs to be <clears throat> part of the warp and the woof it of our life. It has to ooze from your pores. It mm -hmm. really does. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy is letting the world and its thoughts and its desires mm -hmm. ooze from every other portion of the world. Everywhere mm -hmm. you turn is godlessness. Mm -hmm. And yet we forget that the word is supernatural. Right. It's living. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. It pierces. It goes. It, it weaves in. It takes care of. And I didn't know it then. But I was just visiting my oldest daughter, and we all vacationed at, at Thanksgiving together, the two girls and their husbands and the boys and Tony and I. And I saw my girls serve and love on and uh, embrace their husbands, both of them. So we did. And mm. Tony and I both said, you know what? That We didn't know that that was gonna come about, but right. they watched yeah. their parents uh -huh. And they're living it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. You can't buy that. It's great getting old, isn't it? Yeah, it is good. <laughs> when, you, when you see uh, that some of the good things you did, yeah. that's right. they, yeah. really, they really took root in their lives. Good. Well, and it's like you said, if, you, if we hadn't made it, mm -hmm. if I would have let the enemy take me down, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be married. I would be in a padded cell. Mm -hmm. I'd be whacked. We've only got a few seconds, but is this the main message you have to your girls in Girlville and on the, on the uh, cruise is the word, the word, make it a part of your life, make it yes. alive. Absolutely. Hebrews says, let us therefore labor into the rest. Rest is easy. Mm -hmm. Getting there is mm -hmm. what we have to claw mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And when we finally get into the rest of God's word for ourselves, nothing like it. That's true. Boy, you people inspire me. It is <laughs> so good to see you again. Thank you. And like I said at the top of the show, you know, when you run into people and they're steadfast yeah. and they're still moving, they're still climbing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hope a lot of you are in that category. I really do. We are out of time, but please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. <laughs>